I think that there is a question coming up. Uh, Jeff says, please describe the process for applying or beginning conversation on potential pilots. And Julian says, I don't have a direct question, but I would be interested to discuss where the largest knowledge gaps lay and cost-effective ways to close those. For example, looking at landings rather than transecting for maximum sustainable yield. Thank you. I will pass it on now to Michael. Sorry, just to answer Jeff's question that, um, yeah, we're happy to, to support uh, pilots in the, in the region. We have much more detailed information on our, on our website in terms of the, the framework itself. Uh, but we're also also happy to advise on on pilots outside the region. Uh, we've been talking to Canada and the U.S. and the U.K. Um, and other organizations that uh, that are interested in testing parts of the uh, Ocean Accounts methodology. So the uh, website oceanaccountsunscap.org is uh, it's got a lot of detail there. Um, and can you also respond to Julian's question about where the largest knowledge gaps are and cost-effective ways to close uh, these knowledge gaps? I think the, the, the whole dynamics of, of fish stocks, uh, estimating the fish stocks, uh, fish catch, obviously, the, the, the illegal, uh, unregulated, unreported, um, I think landings. There, there's a there's a big initiative about the about the, the 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 ports and getting countries to agree on uh, reporting all all landings. Uh, but yes, they're they're in terms of small scale fishers. Those are probably two of the the biggest gaps. Um, there is another question from Paul Steele from IIED. Which countries are most advanced in terms of oceans accounts, and how far have they got? Yeah, we're still we're still at the scoping stage. There have been a few historical initiatives that we're we're learning from. In fact, I was involved in a in a project, a similar project in Indonesia. We weren't calling it ocean accounts uh, over 20 years ago, but uh, I think the idea of using the SIA as an accounting for oceans is is fairly new. It's only been the last a uh, year or so that we've really been getting our teeth into it. We're doing pilots with Indonesia, Thailand, and uh, talking to other countries, uh, Vanuatu. So we're we're open to to discussing starting these pilots. We start with a, a scoping of what the what the issues are in a very broad sense. These this is not only focusing on small scale fisheries, but it is including small scale fisheries. Some countries are more interested in sources of wastes, or uh, again, like I was saying, estimating the stock and the catch. So I would say nobody's really ahead of the game yet. Uh, I was involved in a fairly large project in Canada three or four years ago. We were doing ecosystem accounting and including oceans. So we see little little uh, glimmers of of light, and people have tried parts of this, but uh, no one has really looked at it as a as a large integrated system, so we're looking forward to um, moving that forward. Uh, maybe I would also like to share with um, the participants that um, IIED has been working with um, many other stakeholders in trying to understand how we can bring together the efforts that a lot of people are doing in trying to reveal the small scale fishery sector following strategies like the ones that Sarah presented but putting them into the framework um, for the SIA account. And as Michael said, this is something that has been going on. Fisheries are reported in the system for national accounts um, every year, although it is very badly done. So one of the, the, um, the work that we're trying to do is encourage um, and sharing strategies to get better data into this coherent framework that speaks to each other. Michael, I was just wondering, um, in terms of the development of the FEEA and Ocean Accounts, um, what sort of interaction there is with the FAO in terms of the fisheries data? Because really they're the kind of main ones that are asking countries for, you know, the catch data and some other um, data around the fisheries. And I just wondered, you know, I mean, they're sort of in a position to kind of change 
to restructure how the data is being fed back to them from the member country. So I just wondered kind of what, you know, sort of what link there is there um, to the OCEAN account. Thanks. Yeah, the FAO, the FAO has been involved in the development of the SIA. And in fact, there's a SIA agriculture, forestry and fisheries that FAO has taken the principles of the SIA to organize their own data. So they're, um, at least the statistical group there is is totally in, involved in the in the SIA and like I said, looking to standardize um, all the FAO data according to the the SIA. So there's a lot of progress there. Uh, there's a question from Michael Cooperman from Conservation International. How do you view freshwater and marine fisheries? Similar issues, uniquely different. How so? I have a Suggestion, but can I pass it on to Michael, who, having worked on the ecosystem accounts, will um, will be able to share something here. I can also come back after Michael or Sarah. The short answer is that in in principle there there shouldn't be any difference, but the the freshwater fisheries, inland fisheries, are probably easier to understand that. We know much more about the freshwater ecosystems and what the influences are. So, um, for example, it's much easier to estimate the estimate the stocks. Um, so, I, I think there's much more work on the the freshwater fisheries, uh, and the marine fisheries gets us into the issue of uh, international waters, and that aren't well monitored by countries. So, there are whole other whole new set of issues to deal with when we're talking about the marine fisheries. Sarah, uh, in your experience collecting um, and working with small-scale fisheries, uh, did you also work in freshwater uh, fishing ecosystems? So my work mostly focused on, well, it entirely focused on marine uh, fisheries. I do, however, however know um, that in freshwater fisheries, in terms of the small-scale fisheries data, um, I think is in a lot of contexts equally as data poor. I think some of the challenges of coming up with estimates are maybe less in a freshwater environment because you don't have these transboundary issues. Um, you know, there's, there's sort of less um, international um, fleets coming in and fishing and so you don't have those kinds of challenges um, that kind of make the data difficult to decipher. Um, but I certainly am not an expert on freshwater habitat um, or um, aquaculture, for that matter. Thank you. There's another question from Mo Monica Marino. Do you include access to finance in the data that you collect from small-scale fisheries? I think this will be for Sarah. So I haven't specifically targeted that, that information. However, on the work that I've done on um, women in fisheries and gender in fisheries, that certainly a very important aspect. Um, that data is not necessarily as as readily available, but certainly as we look at kind of uh, indicators of you know empowerment, um, women's empowerment in small scale fisheries context, access to finance is quite a quite a big one. And so I think that it would be a good one to collect in terms of if you're looking at kind of what types of indicators to look at. And um, it, you know it would be great to see more comparable data across different countries and contexts in that respect. But to my knowledge, there isn't a lot um, unless you go into certain contexts where that's been a specific target. Um, thank you, because of course access to finance is one of the the big restrictive issues that small scale fishers face uh, when they need to prepare um, and get more inclusive and profitable activities. There is another question in here from Rosalind Goodrich from IID. What would the benefits to the private sector uh, be of having this information, for example, for bigger fishing companies? And I imagine that Rosalind means the information from small scale fisheries or the information from oceans accounts. But either way, I would like to ask for both sectors. How would better accounting and better understanding of the small scale fisheries inform the policies that affect the private sector investments and how would oceans accounts also help 
private sector and larger scale investments. I will pass it on to Michael first and then Sarah after this. Thanks. I'll try to answer the, 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 the question about the access to finance as well. Partly it's it would be in the, the CIA in terms of the um, taxes and subsidies, but uh, again how those taxes and subsidies how those subsidies get to the small scale fishers would be part of the missing bits in terms of the uh, disaggregating the beneficiaries. In terms of how the private sector would benefit um, if they're all really transparent about wanting to uh, support sustainable fisheries uh, in general they would they would they would recognize the the importance of the small scale fisheries and um, use this information to uh, adjust their their activities to um, have less of an impact and be more um, I guess it's supportive of the of the, of the small scale fishers. I think there are there are lots of conflicts at the moment. So if information were were comprehensive and uh, like I said, decisions were transparent and motives were for sustainability, then uh, then that information would be very useful to partition the ocean and to encourage mutual support of the the two parts of the the fisheries. Thank you. Um, can I also ask Sarah, how do you think that getting better information for a small scale fishery and gender and women participation can help the policies that also affect um, the larger, uh, bigger fishing companies? Yeah, I think that's a tricky one because I think, like Michael um, brought up, there you know there are there's sort of some conflicting kind of objectives there, but um, I think as there's more pressure on big companies to adopt more kind of you know social corporate responsibility when it comes to their operations. I think they'll there will be a need for companies to kind of shift some of their objectives to include kind of things around equity, uh, gender equity, you know equity and pay and that kind of thing. So I think this information will feed into that kind of broader shift that hopefully will take place. I think it's still relatively new, although I um, heard some examples from the aquaculture sector where larger aquaculture companies are starting to, to adopt some of these corporate social responsibility kind of mandates around things like equity. So I think, I think it, it will feed into that at some level, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, so that's where I think it could be useful. And, um, and of course, another of the important elements of having better information that it's transparent and um, consistently collected will be very useful to uh, design better impact investments along different stages of the value chain. So, for example, in, in some countries, there's a lot of talk about maybe improving the way that landing sites operate that will provide better jobs for women who are involved into some of these other processing um, steps of the value chain. There's another, there's some, a comment from Nazia um, Ebrahim uh, from Moniki. She said she works um, with the Fisheries Economy Research Unit at UBC with Sarah and they are looking, they also look, they have been looking into um, subsidies globally and they do, as Michael was also you pick the issues of taxes and subsidies when you collect this information also in terms of um, community development budgets. There is a question from Sarah Taylor for me, and she said, Ina, you mentioned models linking to climate change. Do you have specific examples to mention? I don't exactly link to fisheries accounts. This is wishful thinking, but there are models for climate change um, that, are be that are beginning to use data from SIA type of accounts. So, for example, all the emissions accounts and land accounts and forest accounts are being used to um, help generate um, better information in response to climate change. So, in, in Colombia, for example, they have been using the forest accounts to develop their um, climate actions in there. So, we, we, I, to my knowledge, I don't think that this has been used in fisheries sector, but it's learning from one sector to the other 
for the future. And as Michael was also saying, this, um, the ocean's accounts are relatively new, one, two years probably. And, and for Michael, um, there was another question in here. It says, Michael, would you say that the ocean accounts could possibly mitigate or at least monitor climate change effects on small scale fisheries? So I'll pass that to you. Right, thanks. And like uh, Ina was saying, there are already a few connections there in the existing sea accounts. With the ocean accounts, we're actively working with the climate change and, and disaster risk community to to look at what 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 data we might share rather than each of us collecting information on um, ocean temperature and coastal communities let's find a a core of data that um, we can help build that would be useful for all three communities we're actually working close with other groups in escap who are for example monitoring sea temperature and chlorophyll and its ability to predict movements of fish stocks, for example. So there are some <clears throat> strong linkages there, but unless we uh, unless we collaborate on this, there'll still be separate communities. So I like the idea of these, these experiments of trying to link the bits and pieces together. So if you have any ideas, please, uh, please uh, connect with me. Uh, thank you. Of, of course, one of the major benefits and the byproducts of all of the processes that have been um, uh, promoted by the WAVES program has been the sharing of the information, the collecting the information, which has not been painless at all. It's um, just just agreeing on specific maps of um, forest cover, for example, in one country has been uh, really difficult, but getting to the point where countries and the different agents agree on what is the data that is going to be used to develop policy has has been a major um, shift in the way that data is used uh, for policies. Uh, so hopefully we can see these now beginning to permeate in the fisheries and the oceans uh, management strategies. As I said also earlier, we have um, a set of guidelines and a toolkit that is coming up very soon on how, how to implement in the practice accounts from small scale fisheries and how do you link this up to national accounts. As from Rosalind, is WAVES doing fisheries accounts or oceans accounts? Uh, Michael, do you know if WAVES have been in contact with you um, regarding oceans accounts? I'm, I'm in touch with WAVES on many issues and um, they're very supportive of us developing the, the, the methodology and in the, in the pilots, but they, they're not directly working on any of the, the pilots with us at the at the moment. But like I said, there's uh, the, 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 these pilots are just starting up and uh, we'll, we're looking for opportunities to, to connect with Waves on this. They do support uh, the, the, the ecosystem accounting. So uh, there's, uh, there's already a link there. Um, yes, and, and um, also to share with the rest um, of the audience, we have also been uh, talking a lot with WAVES and they have been uh, providing feedback in the materials that we are sharing in here as well. Fishery accounts, th there have been, every country collects data on fisheries, so they report fisheries is one of the primary sectors. Um, so every country is already providing information on fisheries. As I said earlier, what we're trying to do here is provide a, um, a framework to do it a bit better each time. And of course, the, uh, Rosalind also mentions, can they link to coastal ecosystem accounts? Uh, yes, definitely. And I think that Michael presented this um, as one of the potential entry points of oceans accounts is looking into coral um, ecosystems, if I'm not mistaken. So yes, the, 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 there's, a, there's a, a bit of a challenge at the moment that we don't really have a good definition of the ecosystem types themselves. The, the, or a, an agreed definition and a lot of the uh, work on you know where the coral and the seagrasses are needs updating and needs needs work uh, one of the issues is that we don't really have the at, at the global level we don't really have all of the, the 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 details of the coastal ecosystem so it's something that uh, we're working with the United States Geological Survey, who've defined, who've defined ecosystem marine units, and now they're in the process of defining 
coastal marine unit. So we're looking forward to, to that, to have a consistent global definition. The, there is a very linked question right after um, on corals. It says, on the topic of corals, is there anything in progress on whether coral ecosystem valuation can be used to catalyze private sector finance for restoration and so on? Yeah, the, the ecological economists have been working on you know, coral and, uh, and seagrass ecosystems for, 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 for many, many years. And, and it's, it's a matter of valuing the, the ecosystem services and the, the fish is one of them. The approach hasn't really been coherent. I would look to see ecosystems, you know, the methodology that links with the existing statistical systems with the system of national accounts. Some of those valuation methods are, they're, they're, they use varied approaches, so they're difficult to bring together. So if we look at uh, Costanza 1997, uh, if you haven't done any work on ecosystem services, uh, you might not know about Costanza 1997 but he didn't even include the, the value of coral ecosystems and the value of the world's ecosystems. And by 2007, coral ecosystems were most highly valued ecosystems. So it's, a, it's an area of, of ongoing research. A lot of people are measuring the you know, broad ecosystem values, not only the fish, but the uh, coastal protection and the, 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 the species habitat and the, the, the cultural values of that. So there's uh, lots of work on the on the value of coastal ecosystems, but I'm trying to conclude here, and we're we're aware of that. That's part of the sea ecosystems. Yes, I I think that it's uh, it's worth to say that uh, one of the advantages of uh, working um, and the different drafts and consultations of creating the sea frameworks is that it brings together a lot of the experience that we have been developing over the past 20 years or more in valuing. Um, economic valuation of different types of ecosystems. So that's um, this is a, a, a very useful way of putting it together, and that's why the ecosystem accounts um, of multiple types of ecosystems are so exciting, but also so difficult because it is linked to the different um, strategies that um, are used to value. How the data is used will depend, will be linked to whether it can be used to promote. Uh, private sector finance. There will be other policies that will be linked to, um, that will hopefully be informed by this better data. There was another, there's two questions in between. Jeff was asking, um, he, his sound went off when um, Michael gave a response on the countries that were, and how, how, do, how do you go around for applying for support to the Oceans account? And Sarah also asked, uh, which countries is IIED focused on the work for small-scale fisheries accounting? I will begin with us. We don't have countries yet, so at the moment we're um, we're trying to work hard on the, the the system, and we're working also with the oceans accounts to try to provide provide some information on the small-scale uh, fisheries accounting. We are at the moment focusing on least developed countries because that's basically what we have funding for but we want to be sharing information and it will apply um, for any country really that has fisheries and Michael in 30 seconds can you just summarize what you said earlier about which countries and how do you um, engage with other people yes we're already working with Indonesia Vanuatu and Thailand we've been talking to several other countries in the in the region um, we're happy to take take requests if you're working in an area if you'd like to find out about our approach to the pilots um, I'd be happy to discuss uh, please send me an email I think you have my, my email address if not I can I can repeat it I think that we are uh, reaching the end of the hour I will really thank um, both Michael and Sarah for uh, joining us today and sharing the information on what they are doing. We really thank you all for participating. We um, ask you to really contact us, contact Michael, Sarah, to, um, if you would like to get more information. Thank you very much, everybody.